Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, on a very special Tuesday, rather than his Tuesday. normal Thursday time, uh, because of course it is election day, uh, Mr. Mike Elizabeth Baker is back, Woo! former CIA covert operation officer, CEO of the Portman Square Group, a global intelligence firm, host of season two, and the first one as well, of Black Files Declassified. Wouldn't it be funny if it was like uh, Bewitched, where he was like the new Darren on, oh, on Black Files? That would be there so There was another great. Mike that he replaced uh, on there, uh, which you can find <laughs> on the Discovery Channel, Science Channel, and of course, Discovery Plus, which is where I caught up on all the episodes. I highly recommend that, Discovery Plus. Uh, welcome on this day of days, sir. As I was already telling Bro, Joe, it all seems yeah, as if we're not really going to get. Uh, my... Huh? My nemesis, Mike. Ro my nemesis, Mike Rowe, is going to replace me on the third season, and I'm going to take <laughs> over his duties on Deadly Catch. Yeah. Then we just keep bouncing back, and people say I I get my mics confused all the time. Um, <laughs> funny story. Funny story. We were filming in uh, where the hell were we? Someplace. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, or Boston, or somewhere like that. I don't know why. There's I a big those difference. Yeah. <laughs> so we're filming. Anyway, we're in. We're inside. We're filming this really interesting segment uh, on robotics for one of the episodes. And I'm waiting. In uh, we were at a at a uh, very highfalutin university, and so there was a conference room, and they let me just kind of sit in there and wait while they were setting up the shot. And I'm just sitting in there, and in comes this guy, a custodian, uh, who comes in to change some of the light bulbs. And so you see, uh, that's where light bulbs are up there. And, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, and so he comes in and and, and he, he looks over after he's changed a couple light bulbs. He goes, you know, my wife loves you. He says, I just want to let you know, uh, absolutely loves you, loves the show. You're all she talks about. She says, I should be jealous, but I watched the show and I thought it's fantastic. And, and so he's going on. And I said, that's great. So we talked for about 10 minutes. And then I realize as I'm getting ready to leave the room, he thinks I'm Mike Rowe. Of course, <laughs> yes. And I, by, I do not blame him. Every time that you've got a nondescript baseball hat on, that is immediately what I think. Uh, yeah. It's a go-to and easy Halloween costume anytime you want it. But now here's the thing. Here's why I know it's not. It's Boston and not Madison, Wisconsin, because you're in a university with robotics. I'm thinking yeah. MIT, which also means that that janitor was probably was Will Matt. hunting. Yes. You oh, were probably in the middle of him doing a theorem yes. and you ruined it because he was so starstruck and he went on to find out that it wasn't his fault. It's not I his see, fault. You know what? That's, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I like them apples. But you're right. It's uh, it, it, it could well have met Matt Damon and uh, I mistook him for Ben Affleck and I told Affleck. him I loved the, the movie. <laughs> Affleck. Uh, well, what? two can play this game. Fun fact, I was in the background watching in between classes at old Emerson College when they did the famous public gardens scene while they're both on the bench, Robin Williams mm -hmm. and Matt Damon. Wait, how many times did you watch this movie looking for yourself? Well, you can't, <laughs> they, we were behind them, so oh, everything, okay. yeah. But they filmed it, but, and of course, we were all very excited about Robin Williams. No one gave a shit about Matt Damon because yeah. he was nobody at the time. I think yeah. he did school times or something. But yeah, I watched that whole thing being filmed. It was fun. Yeah. No one cares. Wow, I've lost oh, everyone. Care. We care. Well, Baker, now I'm gonna, I want to warn our audiences here. We're talking to a man who made, what was it, a $1,000 bet with Joe Rogan that Donald Trump would not run this time around. Mm. Uh, and yeah, that, I hope Joe gives it to charity for your sake. But He hasn't announced yet. We don't that's know That's true. It. That's yeah. true. But yeah. so I just want everyone to take that into account. Any predictions as far as this day of days is concerned, which, again, we probably won't know the results for another fucking two days or whatever. But from your end, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, um, I, I'm, I'm having a cup of coffee because uh, on the day that democracy dies, I want to be all jacked up on coffee. <laughs> caffeine. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just outside setting up the Claymores and, and uh, I'm, you know, loading up some additional magazines and I'm just because, you know, democracy is dying. Democracy's baby. dead. Democracy's uh, dead. I, and that's I, why Joe and I want to visit the bunker. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I permanently. I can't, well, the, you, you guys are welcome anytime, anytime. Uh, literally, just it. knock on the door. My kids will open the door. Then they'll come running to me and say, there's two people outside. Can they come in? And I'll say no. But um, That doesn't but, count as being welcome. Oh, yeah. I guess Do we have right. to sleep yeah. in the barn with the cats and the animals? <laughs> yeah, that's where the fox goes. <laughs> the fox does go in there, as our cat Gus knows. Yeah. Uh, 
But I think here's what I think. I think I'm not sure how the day is going to turn out. It'll probably be it. it however, it turns out uh, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people, no matter which way it goes. Oh, and the, yeah. Which way it goes. Uh, one group of people are going to be yelling that there was cheating and, and, this, and it was a stolen election. Doesn't matter who, the Democrats or the Republicans, if it doesn't work out the way that they want, either side's going to claim that there was shenanigans because that's just, that's where we are. It's that, that is not the, the bailiwick of one side or the other. We have to remember that. Hillary Clinton. Yeah, it, one side leads a little more towards I, violence, though. I mean, so, so both sides are, are, are equally stupid. But I think it's, what will happen is, um, one day, years from now, we'll probably realize that this was the bottom, perhaps. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think this was the bottom when you asked the question, how negative can our politics get here in the U.S.? When you, as the commander-in-chief, as the president of your country, representing all the people in the country, when you get out there and say, you either vote for us and my party or democracy is dead, and the world as we know it is, is gone away and we'll never have elections again. You, I don't see how, unless you just say, vote for my team or the other team's going to come and murder all your family, I don't see how we get any more negative and bullshit than that. And so I'm very disappointed with the way this thing has swung. And honest to God, you know, I, I, I don't know that, you know, like I said, either side's going to be, you know, completely happy with the, the end results. Oh. But both sides will spin it the way they can and we'll continue on. And you know what? Democracy's not going to die because it's a fucking resilient country mm -hmm. and we're going to be just fine. So everybody just put down your fucking pearls and get off the fainting couch and get on with your lives. You I love it when he gets a fire under his You ass. also sound so rich. You have pearls in a fainting couch? <laughs> if you thought Joe was not going to go to your private bunker before, boy, mm. you, she's coming with her Listen, entire extended my, family. My eyes are on that china cabinet. <laughs> oh. By the way, if you're so disenchanted with all current politicians, I got a write-in candidate here for you. Ooh. Vote for George Washington and it completes the ensemble, don't you know? Yes, I like it. You know what? I've heard he's a good man. Uh, uh, yes, and well, I'll tell you this. Let's see how many back episodes Baker watches when he's not on. What is the one? And believe me, it is only one. And don't say they both own slaves. What is the one thing that Joanne Nosachinsky and George Washington have in common? It's a very rare thing. Wooden teeth. Eh, let's see. I, I mean, I'm they're just... not great teeth. Yeah, hey. no, she's got great teeth, and George George did not. But uh, George what actually had the teeth of his slaves. Yeah, if you want to get to I real mean, facts, they both. I don't know. Uh, it's a good. Question. Neither of them have middle names. Indeed, it is just George Washington, and because her name is so weird and has so many syllables, her parents were like, "Fuck it." I also think it has something to do with them not wanting her. Uh, Joanne does not have a middle name. You know, there's only six syllables in your entire first and last name, Joe. I mean, you could have gone with a middle name. Joe it's not the no such. Yeah, I, no one in my immediate family has a middle name. Oh. Um, my dad, my mom, my sister. So, uh, yeah, I don't Did know. Did ever give you a real reason as to why? My mother said our name was long enough, but... <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I don't know. Her sisters have middle names. It's strange, but... Yeah, but her sister does. Her sisters don't have the last name Nosachinsky. Know, if I may get on a more pressing topic like our democracy and possibly the end of the world, <laughs> speaking of um, election interference, okay, Russian oligarch... Hmm, I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> Yevgeny Prigozhin... Yevgeny, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Yevgeny Prigozhin. Yevgeny Prigozhin. Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, exactly. Admits interfering in U.S. elections and promises to do it again. <laughs> um, he really, <clears throat> uh, he recently uh, released a statement saying, we have interfered in U.S. elections. We are interfering and we will continue to interfere carefully accurately, surgically, and in our own way as we know how to do. During our pinpoint operations, we will remove both kidneys and the liver at once. Now, I don't know a lot about surgery, okay, but that seems dangerous. Um, the 61-year-old was indicted by federal prosecutors in 2018 who accused him of meddling in the 2016 election along with 12 other Russians. Um, his admission is the latest in a series of rare public statements from the Kremlin crony who has previously preferred to stay in the shadows. So, Baker, 
Mm. Uh, I would say why now, but uh, I think it's because we're having an election today. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't even matter if he's lying or not, right? He just wants to stoke right. the fear this is what they do. and the paranoia and get Americans to kind of go at each other's throats. And it makes me angry. And it's, I, uh, are you angry too? <laughs> See, look, we're all angry now. Um, I'm yeah, not. I'm dressed like a colonial. <laughs> I love Bill's doing that. Right. Bill's right. It's what they do, right? And, yeah. and and you're right, Joe. It doesn't matter whether they're currently engaged in a large covert action campaign right now targeting this election. It doesn't matter. By virtue of him saying it, right, then, look, A, it's what they've done for generations, right? The Russians have been trying, the Soviets previously have been trying to influence U.S. politics and, you know, uh, the uh, perception of democracy in the U.S., Forever, you can go back to World War II. They tried desperately to keep us out of the war, right? And so they were engaged in in uh, paying off print journalists and union leaders, mm -hmm. and all trying to get uh, influence public opinion. So this is nothing new, and nobody should imagine that it is. They don't give a shit who wins. They care about the credibility of our democracy from our per uh, perception and whether we view our democracy as credible and the voting process as credible. So. Yeah, and it and and you know we should fire a rocket up his ass and and all the others who are engaged in this sort of activity, but they've been doing it for so long uh, that you know we we always you know it, it, we just assume it's going to happen. The Chinese are engaged in the same you know activities. The Iranians, to some degree, you know, it's any nation state that doesn't uh, isn't aligned with our interests. Uh, you know, you can count on them looking for ways to try to undermine our democracy. And the more disjointed we are, the more likely they think we will be less engaged in helping Ukraine. And you've certainly got a lot of people running right now um, that are saying, you know, the moment there is a majority with regards to either the House or Senate, they'll start really pushing down the line of stopping the aid of re Ukraine. And unfortunately, you know, obviously Putin hears that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it happens or not, that is something to keep them going, at least for the the time being. Yeah, so no, nobody's, nobody's, good. Nobody's, uh, nobody's going to. That was that's that's an interesting narrative that, you know, oh, my God, look, not only is democracy going to die, but, you know, they're going to, you know, look at this. I mean, and, and it's a bizarre situation where the Democrats and the progressives are suddenly the war hawks. I know the, it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, but it's not nobody's going to stop the aid. What you know, basically, what what people are looking for is more of a conversation about where is it going, what does it mean, how are we accounting for all of this? You know, what you know, let's if we're going to do this, if we're going to engage in this, and we should learn these lessons from Iraq, Afghanistan, and elsewhere, then you know we should have very very transparent discussions uh, on Capitol Hill and with the American public about what it all means. Because everybody's out sure. there posting Ukrainian flags outside their homes and, and go, yay, hashtag Ukraine. And, you know, nobody's realizing this is going on for a lot longer than people are going to imagine. And so we just have to be real, you know, pragmatic. Absolutely. About but obviously a huge difference being, a huge difference being we were boots in the ground and the, the end the invaders in Afghanistan and Iraq, wherein this is a wholly separate thing. And as of now, and I don't think anything's going to change, all we're doing is unfortunately putting a lot of money and weaponry into the process. So it is very different. We've got boots on the ground. Yeah. We've got U.S. Oh, you know, troops on the ground. You're in, not in the, supposed to talk about that. Uh, no, I mean, it's, you know, it's acknowledged and... and um, yeah, there might be you some... You can't be handing over that much hardware without, you know, a training component... Oh, sure. And, ...and logistics and, you know, you gotta, you gotta account for it all. And so, you know, and that's, and that's the way it should work. And, you know, we should be doing everything we possibly can because, again, is it in our best interests to um, to have sort of the Putin's ideal vision of having a rebuilt Soviet Union? Is it our best interest to to you know kick that to the curb? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, as hopefully we're all on board on that. Um, I got this one's getting old, but it does speak to the state of things and election day overall. Um, I saw this on, because I am very youthful and do only what the hip Generation Z does. Saw this right. on my son, CBS Sunday morning uh, while I was wrapped in my Afghan sweater and, uh, you know, reading my stories. Um, <laughs> they interviewed um, one of many um, Oregonians, if I'm saying that correctly, Mike McCarter, yeah. uh, who lives in the town of Lapine in the state's rural and mostly sparsely populated red side of Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, what, and basically, 
Uh, it, they, the blue part of Western Oregon outweighs the eastern part's red uh, in such a de- to such a degree that they feel that none of their needs will ever be met politically. In talking to a legislator over in the Portland area, I said, quoting him, the legislator doesn't listen to our people, our representatives over he's here. He said, whoa, whoa, Mike. We hear what you're saying. We just outvote you. So there it is. Now, I've got a little video here, uh, if you want to hear the audio, that, that, that covers some of the rest of it. Because you know what? You always need your bells and whistles. Mm. Uh, it should be over. There should be a, a count on there, guys. Gosh, but, Oregon looks great. You just well, what, look at your guns I, 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 on a porch. I haven't told you what they want. They want to be annexed by a uh. Baker State. But his Oregon might not be the Oregon you're thinking of. The one with the misty, rugged coastline. Well, it should Pinot Noir start wineries at, uh, and its loyally blue politics. Yeah, some really nice Pinot Noir from Oregon. No, nope. yeah. this yes. is the red side yeah, of Oregon. Why am I even The rural you? and more sparsely. And then take... Here we go. He's leading a movement called Move Oregon's it. Border. God, this B-roll is push incredible. The blue bits <laughs> into a smaller but still populous state Here of Oregon. Here we go. Whoa. And then taking all the rural red, the red part, the and red part them was. That's a lot, part of a bigger by the way. Idaho. <laughs> yeah. So how much land are we talking, roughly? About 63% of Oregon's land. Mm. So a big chunk. Big chunk. When you have a government that won't listen to the opposition or take into account those of us that live out here, then we have no government representation. This town is about 200. That's Sandy Gilson. Wow. Now, she owns a real you, now Baker, I know what you're thinking. Day, Why right don't you just move to Idaho? Closer to they Boise talked to some of the people that did, but for the most part, this group, and they've got it on a bunch of local ballots here, like 12 of the 11 counties that, wanted, that, that would be involved in this wanted to happen. They want to be taken over by your state. Uh, do you guys talk about this at all? I've heard about secession a lot these days. I've heard about leaving America, all that crap. Annexing mm-hmm. is not one. This is a new one for me. Um, what is Idaho, if anything, said about this? Well, if they don't vote for it, we're just going to take it. I mean, I think... <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, I, you know what? It's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, but you could argue the same for the eastern uh, half of, of, uh, of Washington state, the eastern half of California. I mean, we all tend to think of because of the massive urban centers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Washington State is this massively, you know, blue state. Um, there's a vast part of it, including the agricultural sections, that you know aren't <laughs> in that blue. Well, you could say the same for New York State. It's almost well, like any yeah. state that has a major city. Mm-hmm. There are the differences yeah. between the cities and and the suburbs. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's it's not a surprise. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, frankly. And I think. You know, move Oregon borders. Uh, you know, looking for sixty-three percent of the. Of oh the my exam- God, they're yeah. asking a lot. Big <laughs> ask, <laughs> but um, but it's not a surprise because all you have to do is spend some time, you know, on the on the eastern half of, of any of those states, and you realize how different it is. I mean, California, good God, you get outside oh. of the you know the coastal you know m- massive urban centers, and you start you know heading east, and it's a different world. Um, well, but, even, even if you get close to where, like, say, the Angels play, that's pretty Republican. Yeah, no, know? it is. It is, and it's and and but you know, it's it's the way it's set up, you know, and it's, it's it's what we have to deal with. I would worry more about. I think I think what we have to do as far as looking at realigning anything is to uh, reimagine the primary system, right? So we mm-hmm. quit getting you know crazy ass candidates, you know, elected by or at least in the primaries elected by the hard edges of, of both the right and left. Oh god, yeah. Uh, so, but I don't think that'll happen either, so. Yeah. Now, anything that makes sense or sounds doable and obvious will not happen. That's part of being America, I think. Um, <laughs> you can listen. Being American. Yes. It, it might be a little naive or optimistic of me, but it will be. I I think there is something really important about not just surrounding yourself with like-minded people, you know, to just close yourself off and to say, I only want to be with the people who agree with me. There is something really nice about a state or an area where there are people with differing opinions because Mm -hmm. that's how you learn from other people and grow. But I don't know. Again, that sounds so kumbaya. But. No, but it isn't that kumbaya just for the fact that a lot of the thing that I find is a lot of people claim that they do that. 
and they don't. Yeah. yeah I know. So I, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, there's not a whole lot for me to toot my horn on, but I do actually hang out with a lot of people that don't think the way I do. And for what I've noticed a lot of times with both those people that I hang out with, they don't, whether yeah. it's left or right. You're a better and person, Everyone though. talks a good game, yeah. but nobody does it anymore because why hurt your delicate sensibilities by hanging out with somebody you disagree with? Yeah. And that is why this country is going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Well, we're, pretty, we're, pretty, we're pretty resilient. I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not a negative person in that regard. I think things are pretty dysfunctional right now. But, you know, I, again, I don't believe that we're anywhere within, you know, pissing distance of the death of democracy. I think that's just an absurd... It's a bit of a hyperbole. Or as I used to, I used to have the problem of always saying it's, hyperbole. It's, it's an awful messaging. You know, it's, it's terrible messaging from, the, the, from that party. But I think it's, it's also just incredibly negative and... and and it's just not to, to hear a commander in chief talk like that. You know what? I mean, how about you get up there, you, you talk about the things that you feel you've done that are great and that are beneficial. You talk about the things that, you know, bother the American public and are their concerns. And then you say it's coming up on Election Day. Exercise your right. Get out and vote. Whatever your conscience is, get out and vote. The important thing is to do that. How about, you know, we get a commander in chief that does that. I mean, it's just it's so you know, divisive and negative right now. But anyway, I don't think it, again, I don't think it's the death of democracy. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'll tell you what, and this goes, I bet, for your kids as well. I will say that the, I don't even think you call them Generation Z, but like some of my old, my nephews are now about to hit their teens, which scares the shit out of me. But I mean, I meet their friends and stuff like that, and I've got friends of mine who have kids of that same age, and they seem like a great generation. And I'm, maybe I'm being optimistic, which is not something I normally am, but I'm, I am sort of like grudgingly hopeful for them. I think we're shit out of luck for, say, jo Je uh, Joanne's generation. I think yeah. that they are garbage. I'm but, sorry. Um, yeah, no, failed us monumentally. Yeah. I can't say much for mine either. Uh, yeah. Generation X, man. Hated that name. But I think these kids look good. It sounds to me like your kids are, are kind of of the same vein. I don't know how much, how well you know their friends, but I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of optimistic about them. Yeah, no, they're, they, my, we're, we're lucky. Our kids are all, you know, they got good friends and, and a good support group and everything. And, and you know what? Honestly, every generation is the same. You had some real shitheads during the greatest generation, right? You had some what? real losers. And, and that, and they just were, you know, because of the, the circumstances of the time, you know, it, 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 the people had the opportunity to rise up in, in, in a much more visible way. But, you know, every generation has its assholes and every generation has its real high quality. I mean, I know some wonderful kids coming up now and all the different whatever the categories are. I can't even keep track of all those categories. But every one of them, I've met some just wonderful people. So I, I, I don't want to sound like Wilford Brimley and just say, ah, generations today, are they suck. If but, you were Wilford Brimley, you would have looked like you were 80 when you were 30. Mm. So at the very least, you don't have to worry about that. Um, well, this went very quickly, which is always a good sign. But wait, before we get to your plugs and promotions, Joe could give a shit about this. But at the very least, I bet you you'll like it. Take a look, take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Baker, just pretend that it's cool. Look at this. Okay, I will. Look at I this. Will. Keen stakeout, clay lawn stem pipe to complete my own somb. Uh, where's my, uh, and by the way, cool. how do you, how do you have your own Keen's pipe? Oh my God. First of oh, all, it's a long story. You can read all about it Google, in a I'll, paper. I'll, I'll Google you the story. Uh, I wrote about it for a little paper called the New York Times. <gasps> Fuck that place. Shut up, Baker. It was a wonderful think piece. But here, this isn't the actual one I bought. The, they also sell new ones. Wow. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Tastes like freedom. Look at that, huh? Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I, you make. You sound picture. like you're patronizing me. <laughs> no, I'm not patronizing you. I, Keynes, that, that the, the history behind Keynes is fascinating, and uh, nobody looks better than when they're smoking a pipe like that. <laughs> You look I guess great. You, well, I guess you hate our forefathers. Um, but anyway, I'm using this as a uh, next time you're in town, we should hit Keynes because I happen yeah. to, I happen to know their pipe warden. So you know, there you go. I, I tell you what I'm doing tonight. I'm taking I'm taking uh, the, the, my the, the absolute best person on the planet, my wife, uh, M to. Uh, I, yeah, can we edit in Bill? Yeah, <laughs> to uh, Dave Matthews tonight in concert. Uh, oh, nice. I, w I just wish I had that pipe. I would just sit in the audience and just. Mm. 
that pipe with the Dave Matthews guy. Well, he is actually starting to invest in weed companies, so we know what that oh. pipe's going to have. Yeah. Um, well, I do feel like the Caterpillar and uh, Alice in Wonderland, but uh, give us the uh, give us your plugs, your promotions, uh, more really colorful language when it comes to all things politics. Really inappropriate today. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, by the no, way. you should be. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, nothing really. Um, we're still waiting on production schedules, which seemed like it'd take forever, but uh, for a third season of Black Files Declassified. And in the meantime, you can catch the first and second seasons on Discovery Plus. And, um, you know, then what else? Oh, I've got a, I've got a book coming out, uh, being released in uh, uh, early January. No, middle of January, January 18th, I believe. Did you uh, do the audio thing for it? Yeah. yeah, I did. I did the audio for it, and it, it, uh, I believe it went very well. I, I talked like Gru from Despicable Me the whole time. Um, <laughs> Interesting really, choice. It, it worked mm -hmm. out very well. Nice. And uh, so, uh, yes, and it's going to be on the Scribd platform, uh, Scribd, which is essentially the Netflix of books. And um, so everybody should be, you know, uh, there'll be all sorts of promotion coming out. I mean, I, I think, yeah, you know, I, I'm doing a tour with Al Roker. Who knows what's going to happen? I know